To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education. Hello dear grade 7 children. Today we are going to learn the 8th lesson of the science textbook. That is the nature of the earth. Now what are the lessons, what are the topics that we are going to learn under this lesson children? Let's see. This lesson is going to be a very interesting lesson because you all are going to learn about many new things under this lesson. So what are the topics that we are going to learn? The structure of the earth, tectonic plates and plate tectonics. So under the structure of the earth, we all are going to learn that it's not just the outer part of the earth that we see everyday life. There are other layers of the earths too. So under the structure of the earth, we all are going to learn that there are three main layers of the earth. They are known as crust, mantle and core of the earth. Right children? And tectonic plates and plate tectonics. I am sure you all are going to enjoy this topic because you all are going to learn a lot of new things under this topic. So under this one we all are going to, we are going to learn that the earth is divided into solid plates which are known as tectonic plates and they move relative to each other and that movement is known as plate tectonics. So there are many results of movements of these tectonic plates and we are going to learn all about it. So let's get started. Right, so the first topic is the structure of the earth. So when we consider the earth, earth is one planet of the solar system. Look at this picture children. This is a picture of the solar system. So about the solar system and about the planets and all the other information you have even learned in your geography lessons, right? So here you all can see these are the planets. See, you all can see their orbits as well. The earth we live on is the third planet from the sun in the solar system, right? So look at this, the first planet that is closest to the sun is the Mercury. Then the second one after Mercury, it is Venus. And from Venus, the next is the earth, right? So when you look at the earth, you will see that earth is different from the other planets, right? You all can see earth has blue and green parts both. So because of this reason, earth is known as the blue planet as well. Why do we call the earth the blue planet children? That is because of the presence of water. Because earth is the only planet where water is present. You all know how important water is for the existence of life. No one can live without water. But at the same time, the other planet, there is no water. Therefore, the only planet where life exists is the earth. This is why earth is special. Right, children? So when compared to other planets of the solar system, the earth looks more beautiful because there are lot of other geographical changes like mountains, rivers, oceans, flora, flora means plants, right? And forests on it. Because of these favorable environmental conditions, there is life on earth. Not only water, there are favorable places for the plants and animals to live. There are, because of that reason, there is life on the earth. Right, children? So the other planets are lifeless because of the non-existence of such environmental conditions. Right children? So look at this picture. There are some examples for different types of environments on the earth. Right? There are mountains. This is a snowy mountain. There are beautiful gardens present. Right? And coastal areas present. And here we all can see aquatic environments present. Right children? There are so many different environments. So based on the environment, the types of the plants and the types of the animals living in particular environment is different. Right? So the organisms that can withstand those particular environmental conditions can fit into that environment. 
So therefore, when we consider different types of environments, we can find different set of plants and animals as well. So now we are going to watch a video on more types of environments that we can see on the earth. Right, children. So you all watched that beautiful video on different places of the earth. So I hope you understood that even though in Sri Lanka we can't see most of those places, when we take earth as a unit, there are a number of places, different places present on the earth. Right, children? Let's move on to the next. Right. What is the nature of the inner part of this beautiful earth? What we could see is only the outer part of the earth. When we consider the mountains, plain areas, oceans, rivers, waterfalls, all these places, even deserts, right? All these places present on the surface of the earth. Have you ever tried of looking for the information on the inner parts of the earth, children? What would it look like? No one can see it. But some of the scientists, now the scientists who do experiments, who study about the earth and the other areas are known as geologists. Now geologists, they are trying to find more and more information on the inner parts of the earth as well. But is it very easy children? Now outside or the surface of the earth, we can observe with our eyes. But the thing is, the inner part, it's not possible to observe. In that case, we have to drill the soil and we have to go through the different, different parts. But this is also not possible because under this lesson, we are going to learn as we go inside, right, towards the other layers of the earth, the temperature is going to increase and increase. In that case, after a certain extent, we cannot drill the earth. Right, children? Therefore, what are the different ways that we can find information if we can't reach the inner areas or inner layers of the earth? How to find information or more details about the inner parts of the earth? Let's read this. Geologists obtain information about the nature of the inner part of the earth using different methods. Even though they, they cannot reach the inner layers or inner parts of the earth, there are some other methods to find information, right? In times of volcanic eruptions, different types of rocks are brought to the surface of the earth. Now, you all must have heard of the volcanoes. You all know that during volcanic eruptions, lava comes out of the 
volcanoes. What is lava? Do you know what lava is, children? Lava means molten rock. So inside the earth, the temperature is very, very high. Therefore, the rocks cannot stay as solid itself. They melt. So this molten rock is known as lava. Right, children? So even though in Sri Lanka, we can't experience volcanic eruptions in some other countries like Japan, they experience these situations, right? So therefore, during volcanic eruptions, this lava present in the inner layers of the earth comes out. So along with lava, now I already explained you, lava means molten rock. Molten rock means the solid rocks melt because of the high temperature, right? Therefore, when the lava comes out, because of the outside temperatures lower than that of the inner temperature, after a little while, this lava becomes solid. Or it is, this is known as solidification. Right? The lava solidifies and forms new rocks. So these geologists, they study about these different types of rocks and they get an idea about the inner part of the earth because those rocks were brought from the inner parts of the earth. Right, children? By examining the geologists obtain information about the inner part of the earth. Now, some of you must have seen volcanic eruptions in videos, right? So, shall we watch a video on volcanic eruptions? Right, children. So you all watched the video. So I hope the ones who haven't seen a volcanic eruption before got an idea about volcanic eruption. So you all observe how lava comes out of the volcano during the volcanic eruption. Right. So the first method of obtaining information about the inner parts of the earth is during volcanic eruptions. When the lava comes out, the geologist can study about them. Not only lava, some rock pieces also, 
comes out during the volcanic eruption. So this is the first method of obtaining information about the inner parts of the earth. Right children? What is the second method? We will go through this. Another method is given here, right? Geologists receive more information about the nature of the inner part by examining earthquakes. Right. Now, earthquake is a type of natural disasters. Sri Lanka does not experience earthquakes that much, but there are some other countries that always experience these type of earthquakes. Right, children? However, by studying the earthquakes, geologists can get an idea about the inner parts of the earth. Let's go through this. During earthquakes, huge rock movements within the earth give rise to seismic waves. Right? So during earthquakes, huge mechanical waves go through the earth. These are known as seismic waves. Right? So when these seismic waves move through different parts of the earth, its speed changes. Right? Based on the nature of different different parts of the earth, the speed of the seismic waves also changes. Right children? Because of these changes, scientists can understand what would be the nature of that particular part of the earth. So how do they study the seismic waves children? There is a special type of instrument called seismometer. Right, children? So we have to install different, different seismometers in different parts of the earth cell. So seismometers can sense the earthquakes. So the seismometers can measure the strength of the earthquakes using a special scale or special unit called Richter scales. Right, children? Okay. So during earthquakes, Huge rock movements within the earth, inside the earth, give rise to seismic waves. These waves reach the surface of the earth by running through various layers of the earth. So the earthquakes arise in the inner parts of the earth and it spreads to the upper layers or the surface of the earth. Right? So by studying the time taken for these waves to reach the uh, surface or the speed taken to reach the surface, scientists or geologists can get an idea about the inner layers of the earth. Okay, children? Right. So seismometers. Seismometers are installed in different stations of the earth. Seismic waves are automatically marked by these seismometers. Now here look at this. A seismometer is installed in Pallikale, Sri Lanka, in the central province. Right, children? Other than these, two more other seismometers also installed, one in Mahakanadarava, in the north part of the Sri Lanka, and the other one in the Hakman area, to the south part of the country. Okay, children? The speed of seismic waves running through various layers of the earth are different. Now seismic waves arise because of these earthquakes. During earthquakes, huge waves arise, mechanical waves arise and these are known as seismic waves. These seismic waves run through the earth and in different areas its speed is different. Okay, based on its nature, based on the composition of these particular areas, the speed of these seismic waves also different, right? So information about the internal layers of the earth can be obtained by measuring those speeds. So as we discussed about earthquakes, now we are going to watch a video on earthquakes.
Right children, so you all got an idea how would the earthquake look like, right? So, okay, however, now, so this is the second method of studying about the inner parts of the earth, okay? The first method, now here in this lesson, we are going to learn about two methods, right? The geologists obtain information about the inner parts of the earth, right? Basically, by studying the the speed of the seismic waves that arise during the earthquakes and so by studying the rocks brought to the surface during volcanic eruptions. Okay children? Right. So after studying all this information, these geologists have come to a conclusion that the earth is made up of three layers. What are the three main layers? The crust, mantle and the core. Right children? So that information has helped to discover that the inner part of the earth consists of several layers different from each other. Their structure and their composition is different, right? As shown in the figure, the inner part of the earth can be divided into three layers. They are the core, mantle and crust, right children? So you all can study this picture. You all can see this brown color area is the outermost layer is known as the crust. The brown outermost layer. So this pale yellow color middle area is known as the mantle. The innermost layer, the dark yellow area is known as the core. So by looking at this picture, what can you see? Look at the thickness of the core and the mantle and the crust. So compared to the core and the mantle, you can see the crust is very, very thin. Right, children? It's a very thin area. You all can see it very clearly. But this is where we all live, on the surface of the earth. The surface area is known as the crust. We'll move on to the next. Right, children? What you all can see here, this is a cross-section of a hard-boiled egg, right? Does this look like something that we learned before? Look at this picture and this picture. They almost look alike, right? So because of this reason, we can consider that the cross-section of a hard-boiled egg looks like the layers of the earth. Okay, as looks like the cross section of the earth. So in that case, look at here there are three layers. Here we can see two layers, but we all know that the outermost cover is the shell. I will simply draw the shell. We'll draw the shell like this. Right, if this is the shell we can easily compare the two structures together, right? So we can consider the shell of the egg as the crust of the earth, right? And we can consider the egg white as the middle part or the mantle of the earth and we can consider the egg yolk as the core of the earth. Now remember children, when you read different books, sometimes you will find there are more layers to the earth. But remember, basically there are three main layers, right? So for example, when you read some books, the mantle is again divided into different layers as outer mantle, upper mantle and lower mantle, right? Even in this lesson, we are going to learn core has two main areas, outer core and inner core, right? So in that case, when you read different, different other articles, you are going to find there are more layers to the earth. But remember, basically there are three main layers. Okay, so when we look at this cross section of a hard boiled egg, it's very clear that it is somewhat similar to the cross section of the earth, right? So let's label this one. We can consider this as the crust egg white as the mantle and egg yolk as the core, right? This is the shell. Egg shell is somewhat similar to the crust. 
एग वाइट एग वाइट कैन बी कंसिडर एज द मैंट्र एंड एग योक एग योक कैन बी कंसिडर एज द को Right, children. Now what we learned earlier, when we consider the crust of the Earth, when we look at this picture, the thickness of the crust is very, very low, less than that of the other two parts. So in the same way, when we consider this structure or the cross section of a hard-boiled egg, you all can see, compared to the egg white and the egg yolk, the thickness of the egg shell is very, very less. Right, so that's why we can consider this structure. This is very similar to the cross section of the Earth. Right, so it's a replica of a hard-boiled egg cut across from top to bottom. The inner parts of the Earth can be compared to this replica of an egg. Right, egg yolk, co, egg white, mantle, and egg shell crust. Right, children. So now. We know that geologists find information about the inner parts of the Earth by different ways, right? So after analyzing all these information, now they have come to a conclusion that Earth is made up of three main layers. The outermost thinnest layer is known as the crust. The second layer is known as the mantle, and the innermost thickest layer is known as the core. So now we are going to learn about these three layers separately, right? So before we learn all the details, let's label this one. Now we know this is the crust. The second layer is the mantle. Now I told you all in some books it mentioned as upper mantle and lower mantle, right? Upper mantle. And lower mantle. Right? The outer part is known as the upper mantle, the lower part is known as the or inner part is known as the lower mantle, right? So here about when we learn about the core, I told you all even in this lesson, we are going to learn about the core as two other layers, right? The outer part is known as the outer core, outer core and inner core, right? Outermost crust, then mantle, then outer core and inner core. Now it's easy to study about the each layer separately, right? Okay. So information on the structure of the earth from its surface to the core are given below. First we are going to learn about the crust of the earth, okay? Let's see. The surface of the earth where life exists, even though there are three layers present, the life exists on the crust, right? Life exists is the crust because this is the place where on the surface only humans live, all the other animals live and the plants also grow, right children? So when compared with the size of the earth, it's a thin layer, it's the thinnest layer compared to the other two layers, it's very, very thin, right? Mountains, plains and oceans are found on the crust. Now here, its thickness varies from place to place. It's not always the same thickness present around the earth of this crust, right? At the bottom of the ocean, its thickness is about 5 kilometers. At the bottom of the ocean, thickness is about 5 kilometers. It can change, right? On land, its thickness is about 35 kilometers, right? Especially in the mountain areas, its thickness is about 35 kilometers. Now it's like this, no children? Let's consider. Let's consider this is the core of the earth. If this is the core of the earth and if this is the mantle. If this is the mantle, the outermost layer is the crust, right? 
So the thickness of the crust changes. We'll take a different color here, right? Thickness of the crust changes. Now let's say in mountain areas, the thickness increases high, right? Let's say in ocean areas, its thickness is less. In that case, we can consider if these are ocean areas, these are the oceans, right? This is water. Right, the thickness of the crust is less. Here the thickness is in these areas, thickness is higher than these areas. Okay, so remember the thickness is always not the same around the earth in the crust. At different, different places thickness is different. Right children? So the earth's crust consists of rocks and soil. The crust is made of rocks and soil. Right? So when you consider the crust, actually the crust, the bottom part of the crust contains hard rocks. Right? Little by little, as it uh, comes to the surface of the crust, more and more soil present. Right children? So you all are going to learn how this uh, soil and rock, everything is made in the uh, other lessons. Okay children? Right. However, the crust consists of rocks and soil. It's made up of basic elements like oxygen, silicon, and aluminium. Right? Oxygen, silicon, aluminium. Now, when we consider about oxygen, silicon, aluminium, even iron is also present. Right? Iron is also present. So, out of the entire composition of the crust, oxygen, silicon, aluminium, and iron present about 88%. Right. So now, because of these different substances present, the crust provides most of the elements necessary for our existence. What are the things? Now, this crust has soil. This soil is important for the growth of the plants, for agriculture. Right, children? And at the same time, as habitats for some animals also, this soil is important. Right? So what are the, uh, provides most of the elements necessary, right? So for building materials, you all know that sand, stones, rocks, all these things very important. Even clay, very important for constructions. Right, children? For constructions, it's very important. Okay? And uh, different types of minerals present. These minerals are very important to make medicine, some of them to make fertilizers. These, are, these minerals are very important. Right, children? And at the same time, this crust contains fossil fuels. You all know that because of the buried plant and animal matter, when they undergo changes over millions of years, fossil fuels made. These fossil fuels are also present in the crust area. Right, children? And a lot of metals present in this layer. Right, a lot of metals present, fossil fuels can be obtained from here, building materials can be obtained from here. Right, shall we write them children? Right. Examples. Construction materials. Construction materials. Fossil fuel, metals, soil for agriculture. And habitats too. What else? Important minerals. Right children, those type of things are provided by the crust. Therefore, the crust where we are living on the earth is very, very important for us because there are so many natural resources provided by the crust. Okay, we'll move on to the next. Right, the second layer after crust 
the next layer of the earth is mantle. Right children? So underneath the earth's crust lies the mantle. Its thickness is about 2,900 kilometers. Now see what a big difference between the mantle and the crust. The crust, the maximum thickness is 35 kilometers, right? And there are places with the minimum thickness of 5 kilometers as well. So compared to this crust, see the thickness of the mantle. How high is the thickness is? Okay, it's 2,900 kilometers. It consists of rocks. These rocks contain oxygen, silicon, magnesium and iron. Right children? So the upper part consists of solid rocks. The lower part is made up of molten rocks due to extremely hot environment. Because as we go to the inner parts of the earth, the temperature keeps on increasing. Right? So after a certain extent, because of the very high temperatures present, these rocks cannot stay at its solid state itself. That is because of the very high temperature, it melts, it turns into the liquid state. This is known as molten rocks. Right children? So these rocks contain oxygen, silicon, magnesium and iron. The upper part consists of solid rocks. The lower part is made up of molten rocks due to extremely hot environment. Now I told you all when you read some other books you will read sometimes you will find this one mantle has two areas or two regions. Mantle has two regions upper mantle land upper mantle land lower mantle lower mantle right children so here this upper mantle is the solid part the made up of solid rocks the lower mantle lower part is made up of molten rocks so the lower mantle contained of molten rocks so these molten rocks when they are present inside the earth, they are known as, that is known as magma, right? But during volcanic eruptions, these molten rocks through the cracks, through different falls, these molten rocks come out of the earth. So when it comes out, it is known as lava, right children? So we'll move on to the next. And the innermost layer of the earth is known as the core. And core is, as I mentioned earlier, core is the thickest layer, right? The innermost part of the earth is the core. Its thickness is about 3,500 kilometers. Now here, this is 2,900 kilometers. And the thickness of the core is even higher, right? 3,500 kilometers. The upper part of it is made up of molten iron and nickel metals, right? Upper part contains molten iron and nickel metals. Now here... Because the temperature is very high, the rocks melt and the upper part contains molten iron and nickel metals. But what happens now? That's about the outer core. Now we all know that the core has two parts, inner core and outer core. Right? Core has two parts, outer core and inner core. So the outer core contains of molten iron and nickel metals, which means now even now early I told you all as we go to the inner layers of the earth, the temperature keeps on increasing, right? So when we go to the innermost layer, which means the inner core, what happens? The temperature is even higher. But at the same time, now I told you earlier, because of the very high temperature, these rocks cannot stay as solids, they melt and they become liquids, okay? But here, when, when it goes to the inner core, even though temperature is even higher, still the rocks remain in kind of solid state. What is the reason, children? That is because of the pressure inside is extremely high. 
right? Because of the extremely high pressure, even though the temperature is also higher, the rocks will not melt because of the very high pressure it will remain in the solid state, okay? So the temperature of this area, which means the upper part or outer core area is between 4400 to 5000 degrees Celsius. 4400 degrees Celsius to 5000 degrees Celsius. Do you remember what is the boiling temperature of water? It's only 100 degrees Celsius. So for us, that is also too high. So you all can imagine how high this temperature is. Right, children? So due to high pressure, the lower part of the core remains hard. Its temperature is more than 5000. More than 5000 which is as high as the temperature on the surface of the sun. Right, children, which means extremely high temperature. Okay, children, we'll move on to the next. Right, look at this diagram. So here, given the thickness of the inner layers of the earth, right, what we learned earlier. Right, so look at this one, what is this layer? Look at this, the outermost layer, the green color part. What is that layer, children? That is the crust, the thinnest layer, right? This is the thinnest layer and it is known as the crust, right? Then, what is this second layer? 2,900 kilogram, that is the thickness. So what is this? This is the mantle. The thickness of the mantle is 2,900 kilometers, right? This is the mantle. Then the third layer. Now, the third layer is known as the core. We all know that core has two other areas, outer core and inner core, right? So look at this one. What is the thickness of the core? That is 3,500 kilometers. Now out of that 3,500 kilometers here, given the thickness of the outer core is 2,400 kilometers, right? That is the outer core, outer core. And finally, the thickness of the inner core is 1,100 kilometers. 1,100 kilometers, that is the inner core. Right, children, the outermost layer is the crust. Do you remember what is the thickness of the crust? So when we consider the ocean bottom, it's about 5 kilometers. When we consider the surface or the uh, mountain areas, it's about 35 kilometers. Right, children? Let's write 5 to 35. 5 kilometers to 35 kilometers. Right? So the thickness of the crust is 5 kilometers to 35 kilometers. Mantle thickness is 2,900 kilometers, right? Outer core, 2,400 kilometers. Inner core, 1,100 kilometers. So 2,400 and 1,100 kilometers together, it makes 3,500 kilometers of the total thickness of the core. Right, we'll move on to the next children. Right, so layers of the earth. Now this is a summary of what we have learned. So we have to fill in the blanks, okay? So part of the earth here, a blank, thickness given, composition given, right? So you have to write the elements present and the special information, okay? Right, so look at the thickness. Thickness, D bottom of oceans, five kilometers. Land 35 kilometers. What is this layer, children? That is the outermost layer. Its name is crust. Right. 
So the composition rocks and soil present. What are the elements present here, children? We will write oxygen, silicon, aluminium, aluminium. Right, oxygen, silicon, aluminium, iron nodes are present, okay? Special information, we can write the thinnest layer. The thinnest layer, mountains and oceans present. Right. So when you write, you can write more information as well. Okay. Now the next layer's thickness 2,900 kilometers. Do you all remember? Look at this one, the second layer. That is the mantle. Right? Mantle. Right. Let's write. What are the elements present? Now here composition. Solid rocks and molten rocks, both present. What are the elements present? Oxygen, silicon, iron, magnesium. Oxygen, silicon, iron, magnesium. Right? We can write special information. Upper mantle consists of solid rocks. Lower mantle consists Consists of liquid rocks. Right. Upper mantle consists of solid rocks. Lower mantle consists of liquid rocks. Okay. Right. We'll move on to the next. Next one. Thickness is 3500 kilometers. Part is coal. Right. Composition. Upper part consists of molten rock and nickel metals. Right? So, composition. Upper part consists of molten iron and nickel metals. Right? So, elements present. Iron, nickel. Now, the special information. The temperature is very high. Let's write down that one. Right? Outer core. Temperature four thousand four hundred degrees Celsius to five thousand degrees Celsius. Inner core temperature. More than 5,000. Okay, children. So, when you make this table, you can add more information so that it will be a short note for you all to study. Okay? Right. So, let's go again. Part of the earth crust. Thickness, D bottom of oceans 5 kilometers and the land 35 kilometers. Composition, rocks and soils present. Elements present, oxygen, silicon, aluminium. Special information, the thinnest layer and mountains and oceans present. You can write life exists on this layer, right? Part of the earth, the second one, mantle. Thickness is 2900 kilometers. 
composition solid rocks and molten rocks elements present oxygen silicon iron and magnesium special information upper mantle consists of solid rocks lower mantle consists of liquid rocks right and the next one part of the earth is the core thickness is the 3500 kilometers composition upper part consists of molten iron and nickel metals Elements present, iron and nickel. Special information, outer core's temperature is about 4,400 degrees Celsius to 5,000 degrees Celsius. Inner core, temperature is more than 5,000 degrees Celsius. Right, children? We'll move on to the next. Right. We have an activity to do. Right? Preparation of a replica of the internal structure of the earth. So whatever we learned as a picture, we are going to make as a structure now, right? Remember, you all can do this activity very easily at home, okay? Right. So what do we need? We need a piece of cardboard. We need some sawdust or even uh, coconut refuse, right? And we need paint in three colors and glue. We'll write... A piece of cardboard or even a paper. Sawdust. You have to color this sawdust in three colors, right? Like three, you have to divide the sawdust into three parts and color them in three colors. Sawdust or coconut refuse. Paint in three colors and glue. A piece of cardboard, sawdust or coconut reviews, paint in three colors or glue. Okay? So, what is the method? Draw a circle with a radius of one centimeter at the center of the cardboard. Draw a circle with a radius of seven centimeters, which is Co-centric with the above circle, right? Which means the same center should present with the both, both the circles. Draw another circle with a radius of 13 centimeters, which is co-centric on the above two circles. Put sawdust in three colors, paste them on three layers and name them. Very easy activity. We are going to do this in the lab now. Right, children. Now we are going to make an internal structure, replica of the internal structure of the earth. Look what I have here, children. I already explained you all how to make this replica, okay? Now look at this one. First of all, you have to draw three circles, okay? Now I already drew those three circles. You all can see the smaller circle's radius is one centimeter. The medium-sized circle's uh, radius is seven centimeters. This outermost circle's radius is 13 centimeters and you all can see here I have scraped and dried coconut in three colors you can even use colored sawdust as well and we are going to use glue so first of all I am going to use one color and I am going to paste this smaller circle with this color okay Right, so you all can do this activity very easily at home. You must have done these type of uh, uh, different uh, handwork and art and handwork activities with these colored uh, and colored scraped coconut. Okay, children? So this is not a very difficult activity. So using a ruler like this, so using a paint brush, you can level this. Okay. Right. Right. So I'm going to paste the second circle now.
So now I think you all can understand when we make this replica. I hope you all can understand what these layers are. Okay. So after making all these things, we will discuss it. Right, so we covered the second circle as well. Now one circle is remaining. I am going to cover this circle with yellow. So this is a 2D replica children. So because we are doing it on a paper, this is a 2D structure.
right children so we have finished making the replica of the inner structure internal structure of the earth now can you recognize what are these layers are children so now you all know that there are three main layers of the earth what are those layers children the innermost layer is known as the core the middle layer is known as the mantle and the outermost layer is known as the crust okay so when we uh, learn about the core part of the earth you all know that there are two parts of the core inner core and outer core now look at this orange color circle children the innermost orange color circle represents the inner core right so this red circle represents the outer core so which means when you take this orange and red areas both together it represents the innermost layer or the core area of the earth okay so this yellow color part represents the mantle of the earth right children so what about the outermost layer that is the crust so in this replica we can't see the crust but when you make the replica you can even add the crust with a different color so you all know that when you compare the crust with all the other layers crust is a very thin layer right so you can either uh, draw the crust now see here when you draw the crust draw or when you paste uh, the crust with soda store this dried coconut you have to make sure that you paste only a very thin layer right or you can even draw and color that layer as well so i hope you got an idea about the different layers of the earth using this replica right children so you observe that activity i hope you all have done that activity at home because this is a very easy activity to do so there we drew three circles with the same center right and then we pasted that coconut refuse with three colors on each circle each layer separately right so how did we observe it i told you all that picture is similar to the inner layers of the earth the picture of the inner layer of the earth okay right let's consider this with the same center and we'll color them in three colors right okay so when we consider this structure even in the lab i explained you all this is similar to the inner layers of the earth so in that case this innermost layer the red color circle is similar to the inner core the next one the blue one is similar to the outer core and this outermost layer here present according to this picture is similar to the mantle right where is the crust then crust is the outermost thinnest layer so we can even label this outermost line as the crust or we can even draw it separately that's also fine okay we can draw the crust like this separately okay because anyway crust is a very very thin layer or when you can do another thing when you when you draw this these three circles you can draw another circle that is suitable to represent the crust okay we will label this diagram this is the crust mantle inner core outer core and inner core crust mantle outer core and inner core right children the crust mantle outer core and inner core right so let's write by doing the above activity
we can get an idea about the inner layers the layers of the earth right children by doing the above activity we can get an idea about the inner layers of the earth right so you all can do this activity very easily we have another interesting activity to do next right so this activity similar activity earlier we made a 2d structure this is a 3d structure now we are going to make right preparation of a three-dimensional replica of the internal structure of the earth so what do we need we need play-doh or clay in three colors and then we need a knife that's it right let's write colors knife we need clay in three colors and a knife okay another very easy activity so how to do this activity look at these steps you all can see a small globe is made with a uh, this is like red color clay and then you have to take another different color piece of clay and you have to wrap it you have to make a sheet like this and wrap that red color the first clay ball with this second layer then you have to take another different color now here they have taken green color you have to take another color and the third color you have to make a very very thin layer and you have to wrap the two pieces of clay which is inside using this very easy right make a globe of the size of a lime using clay of one color taking half of the diameter of the previous globe paste a separate colored layer of clay on the top of the globe right on the top of the second clay layer paste a different color of clay layer which is thin as possible and then after making all these three structures what you have to do Use a sharp knife and cut the clay globe you made into two equal halves, right? The above cross section of the clay globe shows how the inner layers are placed, right? So when you cut this into two equal halves, you can observe all three layers very clearly and that will be a very good structure which is similar to the inner layers of the earth. We will do this activity now right children now we are going to make another replica of the internal structure of the earth now unlike the previous one this time we are going to make a 3d structure okay so you all can do this activity very easily at home what do you need to do this activity we need play-doh in three colors okay so here i have play-doh in three colors first i'm going to take the red one to make the innermost layer of the earth now you all know the name that is known as the core. So I took a small piece of this red color uh, play dough and I'm going to make a small ball out of this. Right, okay. Now I'm going to take the second color here also. I'm going to make a small bowl out of this end. Right, you have to spread it. And then you have to take that piece of clay and you have to cover this bowl with this orange color clay and again you have to make a 
ball of clay. So this is the mantle. So the innermost red color ball was the core. Now this orange color part was the mantle. Right. Now we are going to make the outermost layer of the earth. You all know the name that is the crust. So to make the crust I am going to use this green color clay. Now this time we have to make a small piece of clay because you all know that crust is a very thin layer. Okay. Right. Now this piece also you have to spread and you have to make it as thin as possible. And you have to wrap this with this layer. And you have to roll it into a fine bowl like this. Right. So now we have finished making this. Now to observe the inner layers, what we have to do children, observe carefully, we have to cut this bowl into two equal halves. Right. Okay. Now can you all see children? You can see the three layers very easily. What is the innermost layer? The innermost layer is known as the core. Now when you make this, you all know that core has two other layers, inner core and outer core. So if you use a fourth color, another color, you can make that inner core and outer core separately as well. Okay. Now here this red color part is the core and the orange color part what is the next layer children that is known as the mantle. So this orange color layer is the mantle. So you all can see this green color the thinnest layer the outermost layer is known as the crust. So earlier we made one type of replica it was a 2D replica. Now this is a 3D replica now even using this one you can understand the three layers of the earth very clearly. Right children, so you observe that activity. I hope it was very clear and you all can do this activity at home very, very easily. Right, so what did we do? We made this structure using the clay of three different colors. Innermost, the red color ball is similar to the core of the earth. The second layer here, orange color layer is equal to the mantle of the earth, right? The outermost here green one is equal to the crust of the earth, okay? We will do that. We will write the observation. We have to draw the diagram, what, how we saw it, right? This is how we observed it, right? In three different colors. Right. Okay?
let's label this the outermost thinnest layer is the crust then mantle then core so when you do this one you can use four colors and make inner core and outer core separately as well okay you can be creative as you want crust mantle Oh. right children so using this structure you can get a better idea about the inner layers of the earth right let's write using the above 3d structure We can, we can get a better idea about the inner layers the earth right children using the above 3d structure we can get a better idea about the inner layers of the earth right we will move on to the next right we have an assignment to do so the same thing that we have done before you can do it with by using different other materials okay so prepare the model made in the activity, the above activity, this activity, right? Using clay or polystyrene, which means rigiform, paper pulp, right? You can even use paper pulp. You can take newspaper pieces and you can solve them in water and easily you can make a pulp of paper, okay? So cut them into two equal halves and examine the cross section of the model. So if you can't find clay, now normally clay, you can find clay very easily, but you can try the other methods as well. So by doing all these things, you all can get a better idea about the inner layers of the earth. So we have completed the first chapter of this lesson. So after doing this chapter, you have an idea about the inner layers of the earth now you know that geologists find or geologists gather information by different methods about the inner layers of the earth and there are three main layers of the earth what are they children the outermost layer is known as the crust the second layer is known as the mantle and the innermost layer is known as the core so in the next chapter we are going to learn about the tectonic plates and plate tectonics to watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education.